today's session. Thank you for tuning in. Um, today's session is going to be a lot of uh, really cool ideas and focusing on one book specifically, Atomic Habits by James Clear. My name's Carlo, by the way, at Carlo V. Joseph on Instagram. Jess is going to be joining us here in a second. Um, but today's focus is on this amazing book. Uh, it's a self-help book. And I just wanted to be, I just wanted to talk to everyone about how much this has influenced me and is influencing me still. I'm still reading it. Um, and we're going to be focusing on motivation, self-care and self-help today. And I think that this podcast is going to bring up a lot of questions and, and talk about a lot of things that I've discovered recently. And I really am excited to share that with you guys. And Ravindu and Hanya, please feel free to interject or like add in whenever you guys uh, choose. <clears throat> so yeah, the book is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And uh, it's kind of blurred out here, but because of the background, but um, the very kind of first thing moving into things here is he has this whole concept of 1% changes, 1% growth. So the idea behind this is that, you know, um, I know for me personally, when I think of setting a goal or creating um, or achieving an outcome, I think about it as I'm, I have to be 100% done that thing. I mean, especially if there's a deadline, right? But this concept takes that and kind of flips it on its head. So he has this idea of compounding. So bettering yourself by 1% each day. And it doesn't always have to necessarily be, you know, just one thing. Uh, for example, right now I'm actually doing Duolingo. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with Duolingo, but I'm challenging myself to learn a little bit of Italian and a little bit of French every single day. So that's been my kind of like 1% growth. And it's, it's been interesting because I've been finding myself pushing to pushing to grow in multiple areas by like 1%. Okay. I've been, I'm like, okay, what can I do? That's like 1%. How can I put at least 1% in that? And then I often find myself going even further as well. Uh, for example, today I had four assignments due. I said, how can I start not due today, but I have them due at the end of the week. <laughs> and I said, how can I start? And it's just creating that little 1%. I can say, oh, I can do a note about this or a note about that. Oh, I can get this link for later. And then it, it kind of steamrolls. Um, so this 1% changes concept, uh, it really helps us make time our ally. And he's got, James Clear has this really great way throughout the book of letting, uh, letting the reader know that time is an ally. And if we can just think about growing 1% each day in whatever we're interested in, long term, this is going to set us up for, for huge success. Um, he has this concept of outcomes are delayed, so we give up and sticking with things and thinking of that long term outcome or that long term goal. So, have you heard of this? Yeah, saying Kaizen. Sorry to jump in there. No, jump have, in. Have you heard of the word Kaizen? Uh, I no, I haven't. It. So it's actually a Japanese thing. It's pretty much what he's saying here. It's actually just um, a little bit at a time. So a lot of Japanese people, I think, I'm pretty sure it's a Japanese word, but a lot of them say Kaizen, which means you do a little bit at a time. And a little bit can lead to a lot later on. So like 1% each day, it's like almost the same meaning, but a different word. Exactly, exactly right. Same, same concept. And I love that um, connection. Now, and it's, I, I often like find myself or I, I used to find myself kind of overloaded with tasks. So like, let's say, and like just things I wanted to do, right? So let's say if I wanted to do something as simple as clean my car that day, right? It seemed like this like huge daunting task because I had to spend all this time doing it as opposed to, oh, maybe I can just do a little bit here, start a little bit there, you know? start vacuuming and then things just steamroll like things just kind of fall into place so the whole concept of these one percent changes i mean how are you actually going to measure that right it's never going to be just like one percent but think about it as one percent and this can help you grow and achieve uh, a lot i feel like so like i said i've been putting these one percent changes in like different aspects of my life and just kind of being like oh how can i improve one percent on my math skills for example right 
teachers have to go through this math proficiency test at the end of their degree where they like you know do a math a math test and, and see where their math levels are at regardless of what you're teaching so i was like okay how can i improve that how can i do um a one percent change on that and for me it was just like memorizing you know doing times tables or doing long division or doing whatever it is right exponents right and i'm like how i'm going to improve that by one percent each day so long term i'm going to be in a much better place than when i was same thing for the duolingo app that i'm trying now too again i'm learning these different languages just even like just thinking of it as one percent each day so i thought that that was a really good concept to bring up and yet I have this great quote from the book. This one, this one is, is super interesting to me. This comes uh, right from the book on page 20. It says, imagine that you have an ice cube sitting on the table in front of you. The room is cold and you can see your breath. It is currently 25 degrees. Ever so slowly, the room begins to heat up. 26 degrees, 27, 28. The ice cube is still sitting on the table in front of you. 29 degrees, 30, 31. Still, nothing has happened. Then, 32 degrees, the ice begins to melt. A one degree shift, seemingly no different from the temperature, increases before it has unlocked a huge change. So that, that concept kind of blew me away because... I think it's really important to <clears throat> take away from this idea that even just improving by 1% each day long term you're going to get to that mark or that that temperature shift that's going to shift you and like shift your perspective on so many different things and I actually I found that quote to be pretty inspiring so I had to well, save that there if you yeah. think about it 1% a day in 365 days, it's 365 percent. That's right. right. That's that's a big improvement <laughs> if you really think about it. That's a huge improvement. Year. Yeah. I think, thing. Yeah, I think like a lot of the times when we, you know, want to make a change or we think about making a change, it turns out to be like such a big daunting task ahead of us, and it's like, you know what, we're better off not doing it anyway. Like, might as well, you know. It seems like it's too much of like a mountain, but I think by, you know, even 1% a day or even half a percent a day, whatever it is, you know, um, kind of starting out with that and then building on it, like eventually you will, you will see those bad habits as, as it says here, creep out and then the good changes begin to come in. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I love those takeaways. And for me, you know, I, I, th I feel like I deal with anxiety when it comes to deadlines, especially for like handing in assignments at school. So mm -hmm. this kind of brings that anxiety down where I can kind of minimize it and be like, I'm just going to do 1% today. I'm just going to do what I need to today. I'm going to do some, some notes here, some notes there and prepare myself better. Right. And I also recently, <laughs> I'm on motivational TikTok, as I've said before in many different podcasts, <laughs> but something that came up on my for you page today was like start the beginning of the week off extremely um uh motivated like hustle it out at the beginning of the week so that way by the end of the week you can kind of just enjoy it like you have all of your stuff done so for me personally last week was a huge week for assignments a lot of things to hand in and then this week uh a little less but still pretty much on par of that of that assignment list that was coming at me so i was like okay breaking it down one percent what can i do here right so that was super super helpful another yeah. great concept that he talks about is systems versus goals so traditionally and i, I even did this this summer I, i'm still a very big like goal setter like goals 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 go after them achieve them yada 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 so he has this concept james clear um that we, this is direct this is direct from the book winners and losers have the same goals, right? And it's not to say that it's bad to lose. I actually think losing is, is a really good thing because losing involves more learning. Um, but achieving a goal is a momentary change and goals restrict happiness, as in once I reach that goal or once I get to that place, then I'll be happy. And he likes to go through this system way of seeing things where we're focusing on long-term progress and 
the process of it. And this is something that I related to as an actor because I don't know if anyone has seen that iceberg example, but it's usually a picture of an iceberg that's sitting on top of the lake, right? And it's this tiny, 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 tiny little thing, right? And above it, you'll see outcome. So this is what people see, this is the outcome. And then there's the lake, and then there's the bottom of the iceberg, and it's just this huge, like massive chunk of ice. And that's where all the process work and all the knowledge, and that's where everything tends to sit, is like right in there, but nobody's seeing that. And what everybody's seeing is that outcome. So what he's doing is he's saying, focus on that big chunk, focus on all of that process and let go of that, that, I, that idea and that concept, right? And, and temporary results versus changing the system of what causes those results. So goals often lead us to, yes, many positive things. I think you should still set goals. I was going to say also, about the system and goals, what I personally do is, is that for each week, I set a number of tasks for every day what I do. So right. for me, it's like, yeah, I have, a, I, I have some goals that I'm working on currently, right? So I try to, so the 1% change in the system, so what I do is I try to make sure I add a little bit of effort into each of my things. I add them in some, I try to incorporate them in my daily task and somehow I try to, I try to make sure I achieve some a certain number of the percentage of the thing that I'm looking for. So that's what I do. So right. I do the whole system and goals thing. That's a progress that counts to get there. Yeah, no, right. And I, and I love that. That's a, that's a really great connection. Thank you. Thank you, Hanya. Um, and I, I don't know about you guys, but I keep a journal where I write down my systems and I write down my goals and I write down things even up to my daily tasks. Mm -hmm. um, and I make sure that um, if I haven't checked something off, I'll make sure to check it off like as soon as I can kind of thing. Like I always have something I'm, I'm working towards. And I think that's the biggest takeaway um, with this. It's like, oh, when I achieve my goal, I'll be happy. And then that's it. I don't have to do anything, right? No, let's put that system into place. Right. Let's let's keep that momentum going. Let's keep it moving forward. Let's look at other things. Right. When I do finally mm -hmm. learn Italian, let's go into French even more. Right. I mean, it's 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 all about keeping that momentum. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to add on. Um, I really like this saying, like system versus goals and that quote of, you know, winners and losers have the same goals. Um, you know, how I think of it is everyone has goals to achieve something big. Um, one of the things that I usually relate to is a lot of people are like, you know what, I want to, you know, make a lot of money. I want to be very successful. Almost everybody says that, right? But most people don't have a system in place to achieve those goals, right? So that's how I think of it is, you know, goals are good, but you need to have a system to make stuff happen and you need to enjoy the process on its way, right? Not just focus on the end goal because, you know, time goes by and you might not be happy at the end goal, right? You could be yeah. wasted a lot of time. Yeah. And, and I think happiness plays a huge part in it because we definitely feel like a big dopamine hit whenever we reach a goal, right? And I like to relate that to the runner's high. I don't know if any of you guys are runners, but I've been running for about five, six months now. Wasn't a huge runner before that, but I experienced like the runner's high, right? It's kind of like the same thing where you, you reach the end of your goal, you get to whatever it is, how, however many kilometers you need to get in order to, to get that high and you get that hit of dopamine and it's very, very temporary, right? And, you know, perhaps it's nice for a little while, but it shouldn't be like I'm chasing dopamine every time because I'm going after these goals and that's why I'm going after these goals. So exactly like you said, Right. It's, it's about enjoying that process and it's about enjoying the the work behind it. And almost in some ways, the struggle, like enjoying yeah, that. Right. It's, it's going to do nothing but make you stronger. Right. And uh, relating it to, to lifting weights, too. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you have to struggle. You have to get that weight up. But then when you do, you're going to get this goal of having uh, bigger, larger muscles. Right. Like, it's just like, I don't know how else I could break it down, but I think you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, when you said, you know, working on lifting weights it reminds you of something, uh, you know, a new year's resolution, everybody writes down, I want to go to the gym. Right. Yeah. What happens like the first month of the gym? It's so packed. It's so busy. Absolutely right? packed. <laughs> it's crazy. Everyone's getting a gym membership. But yeah. Three, four months later, it's like none of those same people are They're there. They're all gone. 
it's reason. so funny you say that too because I felt like I experienced that again in September because I've been going to the gym pretty consistently throughout this year and uh well I mean when you could for pandemic things and whatnot but when September the beginning of September first came around all the students came to the good life here at Queens uh and they were it, it was just jam-packed like there were lineups like all the way around the gym just like super super busy you could never get a machine and now it's approaching the end of the month literally Tuesday the 28th and you can go in and you know every now and then there's a line for when you have to book your spot but it's not busy like all of those yeah. huge lines are gone and it's it's exactly like you said right it's like they, they set these momentary goals and they don't put the systems in place and then they're not at the gym anymore, right? Or 100%. perhaps they found a, a better deal somewhere else, but. <laughs> I actually to connect to this in a way, like as an influencer, what I know is the way how I started, when I first started writing my reviews, no one knew me, but how I got my identity as what I am right now, like that was all through, uh, that was all through the different little uh, reviews I did. And then from there, and then the outcome of it is now that now people approach to me every, every few days. So I think like that's something that we can also put in there as well. Like besides like fitness being one of them, it's like also like towards like um like if you're like working towards a goal, let's say in your career or somewhere, then I think that that's how it starts. Like it's just it starts with doing a little bit, and then uh, uh your ultimate goal is when you get noticed. Yeah, yeah. I think. I wanna, sorry. sorry, go ahead. No, you can go for it. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to add too. I think a lot of the times why you know people kind of give up throughout the process or don't fully use that entire time and kind of just want to see those results or reach their goal is because they're setting too too unrealistic expectations um and I don't know how to phrase it properly I don't think it's I shouldn't say too high of a goal but something that you think is almost too um you know too challenging to reach at the present moment like for example going back to the gym example if you're, you know, setting that goal, for example, to be at the gym seven days a week for two hours, that's unrealistic because as the time goes by, you know, if you are studying in school and you have all these assignments and stuff, it's hard to put that same time commitment. But I think if, you know, you start out small with the goal of, okay, I want to make it to the gym three times a week, for example, and then slowly increase that day by day or week by week then it's easier to stick to those goals when you're, when you're kind of, again, you know, the 1% changes again, like when we would. Absolutely. Yeah. Th this goes right back to the 1% change. And yeah. of course, like I, I keep saying it, it's, um, it's not going to be like uh, just 1%, like there's no way of measuring that for everybody, but it's yeah. just thinking about it as a concept of like, Oh, that 1%, I'm just going to put like, put in 1% effort, dude, like 1%, like, yeah. can you do that? I think that's achievable for most people. And then yeah what exactly what you said just it was a perfect perfect idea relating to it so uh, yeah and, and thank you hanya for um introducing this next slide here identity and behavior it's it's a really cool concept because many people think of their outcomes and like the things that they've achieved as their identity right so so james clear in this book he he, he challenges the outcome to identity and identity to outcome systems and the systems of belief that we have put into ourselves here right changing your systems will change who you are and i mean like this can be pretty simple I, I don't think these have to be like really crazy things for me it was like i'm gonna read more so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put books that i bought beside my bed table at night that's a system that i put in place that's gonna help me reach my goal right and 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 that system is something that works for me. Or even just like putting my phone across the room before I go to bed. So that way I'm not tempted to like scroll really late at night. Mm -hmm. And I'm not tempted to like be on TikTok. Cause like the TikTok swipe, I don't know for you guys, but like 15 minutes can go by so quick, yeah. <laughs> right? Like so quick. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just like, stops. put that away. <laughs> What's that? Like time stops. Like time you stops. Yeah. You have no idea so, where the time goes, especially when so it's addicting. <laughs> yeah. And I think that creating these system, systems can be as simple as that. Like just like doing little <clears throat> things or creating little spaces in your environment that can help you um, achieve what you want to achieve. And he has this really great quote too. The ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when a habit becomes part of our identity. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, that's super cool. And I know we've talked about this podcast on this podcast before about my 75 hard program, but essentially what it was two 45 minute workouts a day that I completed for 75 days straight. And if you mess up, you go back to day one. And I did that over the summer and I feel like I cannot, um, it's a habit that has stuck and like the, it could just, it could just, it could be put with anything. Another, like the Duolingo thing, I'll go back to that, like learning a new language, putting 10 minutes aside each day and just like going through the app, doing little lessons. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it's going to build and it's going to become a habit reading at the end of the night, like for like read 10 pages of a nonfiction book, right? At the end, like 10 pages. And if you can't do that, five pages, just build a habit. And then all of a sudden you're going to trick your brain into going, oh, I actually really enjoy this, <laughs> right? Because we like, we as human beings like to have systems. We like familiarity. We know what's good for us, but I think due to one time constraints and then also probably just like life, like things happen, right? We, we get pulled back to kind of go back to our old habits and our old ways that might not be so good for us. So putting these systems in place in terms of identity and behavior is a really cool concept. Um, So yeah, I mean, we we kind of talked about this already, but like I know for myself, the phone thing was a huge example of a system that I recognize within myself. Uh, Do you guys have any systems or anything else? I can name a system that I think most of us do is when we wake up, we all go usually brush our teeth and we usually do it with our right hand. Yeah. Or, you know, we go wash our face. It's always like wake up, go to the washroom and do something like that. One thing I've been trying to do recently is when I wake up, I would try to do like a gratitude journal, right? So like kind mm-hmm. of write positive stuff. But as you said, it's it's hard to change the system. But if you can change the system, you can change kind of, you know, who you are, your identity. So that's one system I noticed. Yeah, no, exactly. I think even grabbing, you know, the first thing I do in the morning is I grab my phone and yeah. I check all my messages, even before I brush my teeth or get out of bed. So that's another thing. And for me, I know something that's, you know, I, I, I'm looking to change is even like procrastinating and doing things at the last minute. And um, when it comes to assignments and stuff, you know, I've always kind of been like that person, even in high school where like, I'll wait till the end. And then like that adrenaline will kind of get me going to finish it. But um, I think, you know, that's probably a system for me, but uh, what I want to change is kind of, you know, spreading that out over a longer period of time, because then it doesn't lead to, you know, stress or anything at the end. So that's actually a really interesting concept, though, because we've been kind of discussing this in class, you know, learning how to be a teacher and how to assess students involves um, knowing when to assign students work. And Mm -hmm. I know for myself, I'm exactly like that, Jasenia, like I kind of wait until a point where I kind of get what I like to use is the term healthy anxiety. Yeah, right, where it's like, okay, time's coming up, the assignment's coming up, the due date's coming up, let's knock it out. Let's, let's really get going on it. And that adrenaline, like you said, pushes me into completing the assignment at a, at a much better pace. So like, that's a system that I have too. And I told, totally recognize that. Um, and I think even just recognizing that recognizing our systems as individuals really can help us improve on them in the long term too. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to move on to, uh, another, another concept now. Um, this was one that I found to be super interesting for me. Yeah. It's just like, it's cutting down, uh, it's cutting down something sweet and some junk food. That's the only thing that I, <laughs> I want to change in my system. That's, right. that's the hardest. Cause it's like, it's like, it's like related to diet and related to food. So that's like the most difficult one. Right. And it's funny you say that too, cause I was just going to say, um, uh, in this next slide, he used a really great example of like, I want to be versus I am already. So like the whole thing of like, oh, I am, I, I'm not a healthy person, right? I don't eat healthy food. Like I need to get better at that. I need to need to get better. at that. Try using the language as if you already were. No, I am a healthy person. Like I care about what I put into my body. So I am going to eat good food right? So like as if you're already there, as if you've already achieved it. So he kind of 
He has this idea of a cue, craving, response, and reward. So our cue would be like, oh, okay, like I recognize as an individual, I need to improve on my healthy eating habits. Okay, so I'm craving some, mm, some unhealthy foods right now that are not so good with me. How am I going to respond to that? What's my response to that? Am I going to go back to my cue and then give in? Or am I going to continue on my path and I am a healthy person and then get my reward, which would be healthy body, healthy lifestyle, whatever it is, right? And I'm just relating this to healthy eating because of what the point that you brought up, Hanya, but like this can be for, for anything, right? I mean, I mean, even for the homework thing that we were talking about as well, right? Like um, I am someone who completes my assignment four days before it's due, <laughs> right? Like maybe I want- That's a long time. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> right? Like... four hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I really let's... used to do that a lot. I still remember I have a habit of, even when it comes to work, I like to do my work before it's it's uh, due, so I have the same habit. Very good. You can should rub that off on me, honey. <laughs> hey guys, so oh, we have a question from. Yeah, Karina. I was gonna say let's address that. So her question is: Any tips on staying productive or developing a good schedule in general? So um, I can give my opinion first. I think really staying productive and you know having a good schedule is I feel like you have to, when you wake up in the morning, is you have to schedule your task, right? So this is something I do is, for example, if you're at school, if you are if you have work, um, let's say you're in school, let's say you have an assignment due tomorrow. So maybe put one hour of the day, say, okay, from nine to 11, I'm going to do studying and I'm going to finish that assignment. So that's what I would say is schedule times and make it exact. So, and you stick to that schedule. Yeah. yeah, great. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, I was just going to mention, I think sometimes like what I do is, yeah, I also start out with a schedule at the beginning, beginning of the week and try to schedule, you know, put everything down in one calendar and kind of see um, what I have to do. And then where in between can I find some spaces for a break or, you know, some relaxation. But I think it's also important to remember that as much as we want to schedule, a lot of the times things come up unexpectedly and sometimes having too much of a strict schedule too. And, you know, I know some people will literally by the minute, you know, plan stuff or even by the hour, you still want to ensure that there is some flexibility and some like leeway there for you or for other people because you know life's unexpected and things can come up at any moment but I think um, you know looking into some other productive methods to do your work or study like for example I think there's this one called the Pomodoro method where you know you'll study for 30 minutes then you take a five minute break study for 30 minutes five minute break um, then you study for an hour you take a 20 minute break study for two hours and a half an hour break so um, there's, a, there's a bunch of them, I think, out there now. But, you know, if, if you need that kind of um, push or you, you feel like you need that stability where there is someone almost, you know, telling you what to do, for example, I think that's a good method or strategy because you can put that timer on and it'll tell you when to start and stop and everything. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's a great point. And it, it makes me think of, um, I, I, think, I think a big thing, thank you for asking a question, Karina. Um, a big thing in terms of developing a good schedule is routine and rituals. And I think that like, for example, having a good morning routine to set you up for the entire day, no matter if that day looks differently than, you know, the next day, whatever it might be, um, really kind of sets you up for the day to come. And I found that that's um, a really great thing that's been, I've been implementing in my life. And I, I actually have multiple calendars. I use the Google calendar for all of my school and work related things, which is great because you can color code it and it's super pretty and it looks awesome, right? Jasenia is nodding. So I'm sure that she does it too. <laughs> um, and then I have a daily list or like calendar that, of, that I write the night before, usually of like things I know I need to get done if I have like an extremely long day. Um, and then I have a calendar on a whiteboard where I write things like my personal things, like when I'm going to find time to relax or when I'm going to find time to work out or when I'm going to, to do my social things with friends that like that, that stuff I'll write down. So I personally think keeping a little journal of your daily tasks 
and, and writing things down there is great. And then having differentiation and not having all of it necessarily in one place has helped me. Yeah. And in terms of staying productive, mm. Kanina, like, I think just like Jacenia said, in that, in that kind of way of, go, of going about things is like knowing when to take your breaks. Like that's a huge, that's a huge part of it. Like knowing when to, um, when it, when it's time to work, setting a little goal throughout that study sesh or that work time, and then taking a break, like doing yeah. things that you need to do for yourself. Yeah. yeah. I want to add something there. I was actually listening to a podcast last night and it's about, um, it's a business podcast, but it's talking about, you know, procrastination and really sticking to your plan. And one of the things that he said is, you know, find a mentor or somebody to keep you accountable, right? Uh, for me, I have a lot of mentors in my life. And sometimes you can find someone that you can work with that will keep you accountable to do something. For example, maybe it can be like a family friend or your mom or your dad, or even if it's a close friend, you can say, hey, you know what, this is what I have to do. Can you keep me accountable for, you know, the next week? And I feel like sometimes that has some impact because it feels like, okay, I need to get my work done because I have to be accountable. Right. For me, yeah. it's Google Calendar that I that I normally use a lot for most of my tasks. Earlier I did I did use those um those those yearly calendars that come out like once a year and like I, I had them on the fridge and I usually like write my task in there. But now it's like I don't use it that much. I usually just like see the phone for all my tasks. And it usually has everything aligned in there so I know where to go next once I'm done with my first task and go to the second one. Perfect. So just moving forward here in our slides, um, we're going back to the point of immediate gratification. So <clears throat> this is a kind of like a, a universal concept, but it's a concept that comes up a lot in the book. And again, th this this is a this is um this is something that we're all used to when we post a picture on Instagram and get ten likes, twelve likes, twenty likes, whatever it might be. Like we're getting that hit of dopamine on that app that's saying, oh, social, 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 social. These people like me. These people like what I'm posting, right? It's great. But it's not really thinking about like the long term. I, <laughs> I'm using the Instagram example. And I bet you there are people who definitely plan out their Instagrams, like what they're going to do next and like all of that kind of stuff, which is totally cool. But um, I think the point being here is that this idea and concept going back to systems versus goals right like we were talking about how you can how you can put systems in your life in place that will help you achieve constant growth as opposed to the, just this mm, immediate gratification that's it and i say that right now as my email for duolingo came and it was like hey are you ready to to learn some more <laughs> italian today <laughs> very funny um but it, it's, it's interesting because I feel like it has to be a balance. It can't just be, uh, oh, I got something done. So I get an instant hit of dopamine. And then I'm going to go back to my old habits and my old ways. It's like, oh, I got something done. And then recognizing, oh, what systems did I put in place that helped me get to get that done? And like, how can I like continue to do that? How can I create a system for constant growth as opposed to just relying on that instant hit of dopamine when I do succeed, whenever it might be? The way I see it, it's like, you know how you have a marketing plan for a product, right? I feel like that instant gratification kind of is aligned in there because it's, it's like, you know, how you work towards your first ad and second ad and eventually, let's say you have a commercial, right? So something like that, the way I see. And then, yeah, I, and then the way I think is like, whenever, like, uh, it's like part of human nature that whenever you accomplish something, you want to know, you want to figure out how you got to that point. So I think that's like something where we can like see as this that how um this gratification works yeah that's a great point honey. i think it can be related to almost anything right like a sports game right like you know that that goal happened instant gratification for the team right like you, you know you did well but like okay why and how like what was the reason that you achieved the success there and the whole point is that it was because of that system right keeping that system in place, we're thinking of that long-term application. We're thinking long-term. Um, and it's really interesting too, just like if I can kind of dive into like spirituality for a second here, we always tend to think about um, thinking too far ahead into the future 
as uh, a negative thing and to remain in the present moment. But I feel like this is kind of a weird in-between where we have this concept of recognizing what I did in the present moment and what gave me that instant dopamine hit and like that gratification. But, and I'm, I'm being present in that moment, but I'm also continuing to set myself up for success because I am thinking, oh, I'm going to keep doing this. So like long-term I'll be good too. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I bring this up because I just recently did an assignment on the, the power of now um, by Eckhart Tolle. And he actually has a lot of cool concepts about remaining in the present moment and recognizing what's in front of you. Like an example he used was riding your bike as a child. Like we, we often tend to like, to like take in that experience and we, we really enjoyed it. We enjoyed the process of learning how to ride a bike and we enjoyed being on a bike and biking with our friends. And I feel like now as an adult, we just, oh yeah, I'm on a bike. I'm riding a bike. It's fine. Like I'm going to the store or I'm going to the gym. Or I'm going to wherever I need to go. I'm, I'm biking to school today. Right? I'm biking to work. It's like, we don't, we're not thinking about the actual thing anymore. We're thinking, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, headed somewhere. Right. Yeah. Not the, not yeah. the action of what we're doing. And this concept is the same. It's like recognizing what we need to do for constant growth. So I don't know, I find that super interesting. Um, And it's something that I I really am trying to implement now because I don't know about you, you guys, but for me, I feel like I've just been steamrolling. I've been go, 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 go with like a whole bunch of things. And it's like, take a second to like breathe and really like consider and enjoy where you're at right now. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. I I have a couple of things. wanted to mention so I totally agree Carla with what you were saying and even going back to that bike example you know I read somewhere where it was like take everything and look at it through a child's eyes because children are innocent right they always look for the good in things and they you know relish those small things that I feel like we take for granted but a kid for them like riding a bike getting ice cream those things are everything so um, I think that's that's something to keep in mind and then also what this slide reminded me of was being in high school and we actually learned in one of our classes about like the four levels of happiness um and the first one began with that instant gratification you know you for example you do well in something you want to reward yourself with a gift and sure that lasts for a little bit but that's not your complete happiness and then um slowly slowly you keep on increasing increasing and ultimately your your final happiness is when you reach that purpose stage and that level where you're not only doing good and being you know achieving things for yourself but you're able to give back and do stuff for others and um, when you have I think some type of purpose and fulfillment in your life that's what kind of gives you the happiness um, yes. that you want to achieve altogether. yeah purpose and fulfillment those are two yes I, yes good point very very good point I think that's really important to uh to remember i feel like we have a lot of i feel like we have a lot of striving to get that purpose right now in our in our social structure but not a lot of people realize that like you know it's going to bring you that fulfillment yeah that's that's a really really lovely point i love what you said there awesome um cool yeah i another really cool idea and something that I've been going with for quite some time. And we might've even discussed this a little bit in other uh, podcasts, but this is where I got the concept of you versus you from. So um, here we can see two football players. They're the exact same. (laughs) They're just wearing a different Jersey or different colors. Um, And I thought this was a cool idea because um, oftentimes I, and I've been talking to my personal like life coach about this for quite some time, but we, we even discussed comparing yourself to other people um, in unhealthy ways in our last podcast and how it's very, it's human nature to do that. And it's, it's something that can't really be helped. You know, we're going to do that kind of no matter what. Um, I have been finding great success in comparing myself to myself, you versus you. I'm not competing with anyone that is outside of my little bubble right now. 
right? Like I am working inside here, right? Like I'm, I'm doing this for myself. There are other people who are out there achieving things. And I th often think, or I often used to think, oh, why can't I do that? Like, what is it that I is, uh, it, that, that that person has that I don't have? Why am I not in his or her shoes, right? And I was so focused on them. I wasn't doing anything inside here to lift myself up. And the minute I turned that around on its head and I said, okay, fight your own demons, fight your own battles, like turn it around and, and, and fight yourself in some ways. And that was when I started to see real growth. That was when I started to make strength gains at the gym. That was when I started to get better at long distance running. That was when I started to get better at reading. I, was, I started to get better at, at my academics. Uh, and I'm still like, all, I feel like I'll always be building it up. I'll always be doing this. And I'll always be improving that inner circle within myself um, so much so that the focus is just going to be on me. It's not going to be on anyone else, anyone else outside. Right. And, and the, when we do that, and we, we do that a lot through the use of social media, we, we've talked about this in our other podcasts. When we do that, results come easy. And I'll say this quote again, but when you're not fighting everything, things come easily to you. That was a quote that my coach said to me one day in a session. And I just thought like my mind was blown, right? I was kind of like, it's so simple. It's so easy to consider, but yet I, it was something I struggled with because I think in our society today, we kind of have to feel like, oh, I have to be on top. I have to be the best at this, the best at that. I have to beat this person, right? I have to be, I have to beat up this person and, and compete with them on this level, right? It's like, no, like you are only ever competing with yourself. You should only ever be competing with yourself. Anyone else, A, does not care, right? Like you think they care. And B, it doesn't matter, right? And not to say they don't matter as, as people, but like to you, they shouldn't matter. What, what their goals and aspirations are, what they're going to achieve can be great. But what you can achieve can also be great. And I don't know, I just, yeah, I think this is a concept that I'm going to continue to unlock different levels of as I level up or try to level up myself. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this or had a positive experience with this topic, but I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's a yeah. really great thing that you said there. Um, it's 100 percent true. We live in a world where um, everybody is trying to look at somebody else and you know, compare. But in reality, the only person that matters to you is you and the person in front of the mirror, right? So uh, one thing I heard is if the person in front of the mirror doesn't make you happy, you got to work on yourself and improve yourself, right? So working on yourself is the number one key to becoming better, right? Not working, thinking, oh, um, it's somebody else's fault, right? Have you have you guys met those people that always blame someone else where it's there, it's always somebody else's fault and they're not their fault, right? That's a great point. Yeah, they're not putting any of the blame on themselves exactly. and they're not growing themselves because of that. Yeah, right? and one thing I try to do is like, you know what? Work on saying, you know what? It's, it's probably my fault. I got to get better because it's not always other people. It's, it's most of the time it's me and I'm the only person I can change, right? So I love this you versus you. It's really great. Yeah, yeah. You're the only one that's in charge of your thoughts and yeah. what you can achieve at the end of the day. You can't control anyone else but yourself. Yeah. And I think it's a very simple and basic concept, but it's so easy to forget, you know? And it, it's so helpful to just kind of remind yourself of once in a while, especially if you're, you know, kind of like me right now, because I feel like I'm in this in this grind mode right now where I'm just I'm trying to level up myself in a bunch of different ways. And it's also super motivating to... Number one, I talk about keeping a journal quite often on this podcast, but I think it's really important because I have like six journals going on right now, to be quite honest with you, but one of them's for fitness and I'll look through three months back and I'll say, like, oh, um, okay, I was benching this weight three months ago and now I've upped that by like 25 pounds, like holy, the, the amount of growth in terms of just competing with yourself is like so motivating right and when you do it 
when you when you're competing with other people like that, for example, like in a in a weight thing, right? It's just it's not doesn't have the same level of satisfaction, right? It's it feels kind of like worse to either be beating someone in a category or competing with someone like that. It feels kind of worse in a way, as opposed to just like like actually beating yourself, like competing with yourself and like winning against yourself almost. Right. So yeah, really cool concept that sparked a lot for me. So um, talking point here, uh, what are some changes we can make in our everyday lives to implement these systems we discussed today? Struggle makes us stronger concept rituals and routines. Yeah. So I can quickly go first. Um, I'd like to develop, I think, a better nightly routine. I think I've got the morning routine down packed. I think that's at a good, good place for me. But I know for my nightly routine, like I, I think like I am someone who loves to use my technology before bed. And I don't think that's like the best thing for me. Um, so I think implementing a system where I can like really get my technology out of even even out of my room to be quite honest with you and into another room before i i hit the hay and uh turn in for the night would be a system that i could put in place that would be really beneficial to my everyday life um what about you guys do you have do you have any ideas or concepts for improvement i think i'm i'm the same as you where um for me and then i think i use a lot of technology before sleeping too and i want to work on not using a lot of technology and not sleeping on my phone, not sleeping with my phone like yeah. on the side and not like when I wake up, most of the time, the first thing I do is, you know, what, like, what are the notifications like it? And I remember right. listening to this uh, podcast a while ago, they said, sometimes as that happens and you get negative news, it affects your whole day. Right. But instead totally. I want to kind of change that where, you know, the first 30 minutes when I wake up and the first 30 minutes before I go to bed, maybe I read, a book about you know what like something that can bring me up like a, a self-care book like you know atomic habits you know thinking mm-hmm. for rich that's what i want to change i think love it mm-hmm. yeah no i love both of those guys i think those are great you know at least starting points i, I always feel like as soon as you can recognize what you want, want to change, that's the first step, right? Acceptance is always the first step. So right. um, I think for me is honestly, I don't know if I can pinpoint a, necessarily a certain routine or a ritual, but just balance in general. I think I've always been striving to mm. create more of a balance in everything, you know, whether it's academics, social life, you know, whatever, going fitness, taking care of my health. I feel like sometimes I go through phases where I'm super focused on one thing and then let, let a couple of others kind of go to the back burner. Um, or, at, you know, for a few weeks, you know, for exa- example, if assignments start piling up, then I'll leave the other aspects of my life altogether or, and I'm focused just there. So I think for me, I just want to kind of more maintain um, a system of balance where, you know, every every week can kind of almost feel the same and look the same. And it's not like one has to go from completely, you know, super stressful to all of a sudden completely laid back. And um, I think that kind of is like a roller coaster sometimes for yourself. And it can put you in like a position where you're not always, you know, mentally or emotionally feeling the best. But um, yeah, I think again, that that going back to the 1% change every single day, moving more towards a balance and uh, making sure that you check up on all the different aspects of your life. That's kind of the change that I'd like to make. I love that. Yeah. For me, it's the 1% because for me, it's like, it's kind of like diet related. So I would definitely go for the 1% is like cutting off uh, junk food, like try to easily get into the habit of eating healthy. So I think that would be something. And that's a a 1% change that you can make, right? Like, oh, I'm going to eat a little less junk food on this day, whatever it might be. (laughs) 1% less. 1% less. That's the thing. Because junk food, like, it's like an attraction. Eating, when you see healthy food, it's like, it doesn't attract you at all, right? So it's hard to pick between the two when it comes to eating. But I think it's also a mindset, too, when it comes to that, right? It's about changing that mindset where healthy doesn't have to equal bad taste, for example, or... You know, I feel like we could do a whole nother session on this, but no, but it's true. It's it's so true. Healthy doesn't have to mean bad. Badly. And I feel like even you you begin to enjoy it more, 
right? Yeah, like, healthy food can taste really good. Yeah, I, I mean, I have a really big sweet tooth, so like I like my like chocolates and sweets, you know, as much as the next guy. But I've just found ways to kind of um, still have those things, but maybe I'll do like a, a Splenda instead of like regular sugar or dark chocolate instead of regular chocolate. Like there's like healthier alternatives and like healthier options that are just as good, if not better, I would argue in some cases. <laughs> um, I mean, like the level of flavors they have in protein powder nowadays, like protein powder ice cream exists, everybody. And it's really good. <laughs> it's, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> why, don't we, why don't we ask our viewers if what's something they're working on if there's any viewers on right now yeah if there okay. if there is anybody like definitely put something that they're working on right now um because that's kind of that's kind of where we're gonna where we're gonna end off today so we'll just continue to have the a little bit more discussion but yeah i think like building the rituals and routines in general in my life is something that i'd like to uh, improve on more. And I think I have been doing that slowly. Um, but I like, for example, do you guys, I, I know a lot of people that I've talked to and asked this question, they all say, yes. Do you guys fall asleep to a show? Sometimes. Yeah. I've literally, I really had those days. Like I, I, like I did great in class and stuff, but it's like, I'm really halfway sleepy. So that was the most difficult part was paying attention, but luckily I got through that. So yeah, like I, I like, I do that a lot. Like not around shows, but it's mostly towards like when I was a student. Okay. I'm not a big TV person, to be honest. So I don't really watch shows. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I for me, like I think um, it's it's so interesting because it almost started as a joke, but then I began to think about it as something quite serious, and it was like um, we all have our emotional support systems right so they they come in different forms i know for a close friend of mine it it's a it's an ipad where she only watches tiktoks on <laughs> and that's she calls it her emotional support ipad and it's like with her everywhere she goes if she has some free time and she just wants some downtime to relax she's gonna go on that it's her emotional support ipad she needs it she feels comfortable with it right for me it's watching the office right before bed <laughs> And it's like, I, I recognize that that might not be the healthiest of emotional support systems. My brain is overstimulated. Again, the whole thing of having technology present right before I go to bed, the blue light. I mean, we can go on and on and on, but like, yeah, I think for, for myself, it's improving that, that, that nightly routine and just trying to use less technology before bed, like putting that system in place. And I began to think about how I can do this in like so many different ways in my life. Um, and I got excited about it. I was like, how can I maximize my, my personal space? So that way I'm like less, what's the word? Triggered to like fall back into certain patterns. And I think it's a really cool concept I never kind of considered before. Like just placing your books or maybe placing your instrument in a place next to a chair. So you know that, oh, I'm going to sit down here and not scroll my phone. I'm going to sit down here and like practice my guitar for 10 minutes. So like, that's what I did. Like I put my chair and my guitar right beside each other. And now it's what I've been doing. Like it's, it's also about how you like set up and like maximize your space. Same thing goes for your workspace too. Um, that that's another cool concept that I think I've been considering and thinking about for quite some time now. Um, I have a bunch of different workspaces. Um, Sometimes I find I work better in a mess. Sometimes I find I work better when there's organization. So, yeah, yeah. For me, if you talk about shows that that I just like watch, like sometimes like if I need if I need for emotional support or anything, or for just like just to relax, that's Brooklyn Nine Nine. That's really <laughs> that show all the way because there's like it makes it is a it's comedy. It makes you relax. So in my opinion, if you watch like something that's like a light comedy, it's always good for you. Other than watching something serious and then feeling even much worse. So right. there's a difference in there and what you watch too. Right. No, of course. And that's another one, Hanya, too. Like Brooklyn Nine-Nine is another one of those shows that you can kind of just put on in the background and relax, you know? Like it's so uh, easy to watch. You begin to know the characters really well. Um, I kind of used to think of Friends as being in the same boat as that, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. So like it, I was like rotating between those three shows for quite some time before bed. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I actually read once they're under the same produ- the same production company. All these three shows they're under and they're under NBC. I actually read that once. Uh, Friends, Office, and Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know Brooklyn Nine Nine and the Office were. Oh, yeah. Superstore. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's, that's another another them. good one. <laughs> and we could talk about shows, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, going going back to to the point of today, right? I think it's like. I never really considered the use of systems versus goals. I, I, it's not something I, I spent a lot of time thinking about. I was like, okay, goal setting. Yes, of course. Write it down, get it done. It feels great to check it off. And it does. Like, it feels awesome to check something off. Like, like I, the, we were talking about that instant dopamine hit, right? Like, it's, it's really good, um, really, really good feeling. There's no feeling that beats it almost. But What's the use if you're going to fall back on your old habits? Yeah, I, I, I've learned to enjoy the struggle, I think. And I think that's a big part of it, too. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know if you guys remember that song. It was popular many years ago. I think I was in grade one or two, but by Miley Cyrus, The Climb. <laughs> Let's like, go, yes. <laughs> yeah, that song is a perfect you know, representation of this whole, I feel like, session that it's not about the end goal all the time it's about that whole the struggles the process to get there because that's when you're learning the most Mm -hmm. right so yeah Yeah. that's that's what just it just triggered my memory of that Mm -hmm. song so it's that's a great point and you know even for me being in teacher's college right now and learning how to assess students it's literally exactly what you said it's not about this end process it's not about how much you can put down on a test and how many answers you can get right it's like what you did to get there it's the knowledge and experience that you've earned and learned to be at the point that you're at where you feel confident enough to take that test, whatever it might be. I'm hopefully going to be a drama and music teacher, so hopefully I don't have to give my students traditional tests. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's super interesting how once I've implemented these changes into my life, how I can connect it to so many different things. It's all about that process. Yeah, it's all about the climb. I love that perfect <laughs> i had the hugest crush on miley cyrus as a kid so <laughs> i remember dressing up for her for, as for halloween for like five years straight. oh my gosh the best yeah. hannah montana i loved it oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay well very cool once again the book is um atomic habits by james clear um it's actually like a number one to- a number one new york times bestseller um so <laughs> would recommend uh, it's been a great read for me. I'm reading through it again just to kind of be inspired by a lot of the, the things that are put in the book. Um, I've been quoting it like all week, I feel like, and I was super excited to do this podcast. So thank you, team, for letting me take the lead on this one and talk about my motivation. <laughs> um, yeah, and thank you, chat, for asking your questions. Um, a great point that Anu made was enjoying the process is more important than reaching the goal destination. It's the ups and downs during the journey, which makes the destination success and worthwhile. Great. Love it. I love that point. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, our socials are there. Please follow and subscribe and like. Um, and yeah, once again, I'm Carlo. I'm <clears throat> And uh, yeah, we'll leave you there for today. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for watching. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you on Thursday. Bye.